we're kicking off session three fun with rice papers we're so excited to have you here for our virtual open house um so we're going to be diving into kind of the luxurious rice papers looking at some different ways to use it um of course we've got everybody muted just to cut out any background noise but if you have any questions or comments please connect with one another and let us know your thoughts on this session in our chat box below. You can find the little chat thing. And I've got Anita in the producer's booth. She's gonna be uh, tossing in some special links there. So keep your eyes there um, along with a coupon code for 10% off all regular price items on the website. So we're gonna be looking at lots of fun stuff, showing off to some really great, exciting sale items in this session. And of course, finishing off our session three card from the virtual open house kit. So we'll finish this guy off and use the rice paper from our virtual open house kit. Now, if there's anybody who's watching who hasn't had the chance to grab their virtual open house kit yet, we do still have a couple left. You can grab them on our website, xccrafts.com. Just search virtual open house kit and uh, you will be able to order yours and make all of the 10 beautiful cards that we're making as kind of craft alongs here with this session. Don't forget, we've got the prep instruction video uh, to get you up to the point where we'll be making the card live right now. Uh, so you can check that out. It's on our YouTube too, along with all kinds of fun inspiration videos, tutorials, card making videos, all kinds of fun stuff. So let's dive into it. We're going to lo be looking at uh, the wonderful world of rice papers. I'm going to grab my mouse and just switch us over so we can get a close up look at these gorgeous papers. We have all kinds of rice papers on sale. You guys can save 25% on all of these rice papers. They are so so fun. We've got all different kinds of brands. We've got art by Marlene, of course, her gorgeous style. And that is from the same collection um, of rice paper that is in our virtual open house kit. Here's the one we're going to use to make our little card at the end of the session. Um, and then we have just lovely, lovely feathers all kinds of gorgeous florals, kind of fairy-esque. This is from the Janine's Mindful Art Collection. And now rice paper is just a gorgeous kind of woven. You can see all of the individual fibers um, in this paper. And it just creates a really luxurious effect. Now, of course, we can cut out any of these elements and add them onto our crafting projects our paper craft projects we can use decoupage we could put them on any medium really just depends on what kind of um, sealant you're going to be using for it uh, we've got all kinds of gorgeous prints so definitely check them out on ecstasycrafts.com we've got some from pink ink the gorgeous pink ink uh, rice papers. This is from the Free to Dream collection. And let's look at that. Now it coordinates with their papers, uh, the blue hues, and uh, some of the unicorn kind of mystical series stamp collections from Pink Ink. So it's really quite cool and a really nice way to add just a different element in to your card making. Got a nice little Let It Snow border up at the top some different snowflakes there unicorn kisses really gorgeous stuff so we've made i've made up a, a couple samples to show give you an idea of kind of what rice paper can look like in a project uh, so you can add it on so subtly here we've clipped some of the florals from this is the Janine's Mindful Art Collection. So you can see we've clipped the corner here and just tacked it on to our butterfly. And let me show you how we can do that. So I'm gonna take this one and just show you how we can take little bits and pieces to, from, from the rice paper as a whole and apply it to our cards. So we've, we've also um, tossed this butterfly die, because I mean, how can you not just fall in love with this die set? 
from um, Just Lou Butterfly Collection by Studio Light. It's a dye. You can attach different leaflets and make a butterfly journal um, with this dye and some binder rings. How fun. Three different dye layers to do really fun stuff with. And then it also has a coordinating stencil, which is just absolutely amazing. I mean, look at this butterfly wing that fits right on to the butterfly and then some different elements to add some dimension to your wings. So we've stenciled on some of that as well. You can see I've used the clear texture paste to really give a papery look. So the rice paper goes so perfectly with this kind of card, a really light kind of interesting textured card. So what we can do is we can, we can always, of course, we can cut sections from our rice paper. We can use the full thing, whatever we want. We can make kind of a collage. Um, but what I really love to do is I grab my little water brush or, you know, whatever, whatever brush is going and some water. I'm going to use my water brush and we will just take a little piece of the rice paper that we want to use. So if we wanted to add these florals onto our corner, we can trace the area that we want and just get it a little wet. And because these fibers are so delicate, trace the whole thing, even the, even the edge. I like to go over it twice, make sure the fibers are kind of like soaked. Just with the water. And then you can see how beautifully it tears. And the fibers just stretch and pull apart. So you really get a nice faded out look. It's not just a, um, a harsh edge like you would get if you were cutting a piece of paper um, or, or, you know, even cutting the rice paper um, or a die cut element or something like that, where it's like really a main focal point. I find these rice papers are just absolutely beautiful for building backgrounds with. They just blend into the background so perfectly. You can layer one on top of the other to create a really cool collage if you so choose. But let me show you how we can attach this just to our cardstock. Imagine whatever piece of card we're using. Imagine we're attaching it to our butterfly wing. So I'm going to grab a foam brush or whatever's going. My favorite way to attach it is with some of our um, glossy glue sealing glaze. Uh, but Mod Podge works. Um, craft glue will work. I'm just going to grab a little bit onto my brush. I like to give a base coat of my, my adhesive. You, can, you could even use glue, guys, if you wanted. You can water glue down a little bit and just get a nice light coat. It doesn't take much. You just want something that's going to dry clear because we want to seal over top of it. So once we've got it stuck down there, tacked down, we just go over and just brush out those edges and it just comes beautifully, blends beautifully into our background. You see that? How gorgeous, you can see the fibers. So if we had an image in behind that, it's just going to meld perfectly with that. So we can continue to steal uh, any little elements that we want from our sheet. So here, why don't we grab this nice butterfly right here, and I'll just trace along the outside. I love this sheet. I don't know if you can see on camera, but the gorgeous script background, even those little bits and pieces can come together to create something really beautiful. So just tracing the outline. And then we just gently tear it out. Once you've softened those fibers up with the water, it just pulls right out. So we can really use it in all kinds of different ways. 
So again, we'll just add a little bit of our adhesive, whether you're using, um, we can water down just a little bit of water-based glue to put it on there. There we go. Get that on there and we're building our own little scene, which is so fun. Now, another really cool way to attach rice paper uh, is with the textured effects, the Helmar textured effects paste. So we'll use, we'll do it the same as, uh, as our glossy glue seal and glaze. I'm just going to attach, uh, apply a thin layer with uh, a foam brush. Just a thin layer. We just want enough to tack our rice paper down. Now let's grab, we'll grab this other butterfly. So we can use anything to get this to stick. So now we're just popping it down onto our um, textured effects. Now we can, again, attach, apply a small thin layer or we can start to build it up. Now, what I love about this texture paste is that it dries clear. So when that dries, we will have some fun texture over top of our butterfly element. So we could cover the full thing. And as it dries, it's just adding even more dimension to these backgrounds which is such a fun way to add interest to your paper craft projects, your cards, your scrapbook pages, whatever. It could be MDF, it could be wood projects, anything. So as that dries, the, the textured effects paste will clear up and give a really cool look, kind of vintagey look. Now, while I'm playing with this textured effects paste, I want to show you how we got our butterfly wing, that glassy butterfly wing look onto our wing die. So we've cut out our wing die, grab our coordinating stencil, and with our textured effects, that will dry clear, we can toss that on to our wing so that whatever color of paper we're using, whatever pattern, whatever, we can do all kinds of stuff in behind and over top. But this glassy wing pattern is going to shine, catch the light on our butterfly wing. So there you go, you just spread a little bit on. Now, guys, you can use the 10% uh, off coupon code. If you're watching live, you'll have that code. You can get that to get 10% off of this clear texture paste as well. Okay, so we've filled in all of our little wing bits. Peel that stencil back. And how fun is that? And as it dries, it goes clear and adds that really glassy, airy butterfly look to our card or our butterfly die. You can see it there. And on the inside, even more subtle with all of those textured effects layered. Tons of fun, goes so well with the rice paper, I think. So, I'll show you some more little samples of incorporating the rice paper and how you can build it on top of other backgrounds. So this background was made with our uh, botanical stains, one of our purple botanical stains, blackberry, I believe. And the feather just melds right in. That one was stolen from a little peacock feather from this chunk of rice paper. So you can just take it 
bits and pieces and different elements and work them into your projects. Um, another one that we've done here using that same floral one, actually, we can add all kinds of different elements into this is the um, art by Marlene tag journal, which is a really fun project to work on. But look at all of you can layer it on top of different layers. Here's a die cut element with some rice paper layered on using that same technique, just a little bit of the glossy glue sealing glaze or Mod Podge or some watered down glue and just layered it on there. And it is on there. It gives a really lovely texture, that fibrous texture added in elements here and there. There's our little butterfly. All kinds of fun stuff, some florals there. To build those backgrounds, you can stamp on top of it. You can see here we've stamped on top of the rice paper. There's that butterfly wing stencil, adding some texture with the Luna paste on there. And some really gorgeous florals. I love, love the rice paper, love this kit. And actually we have tossed this one onto the sale category for the virtual open house because we, we were just gonna show you guys and we thought, you know what? Everybody might really like this kit <laughs> because we love it here. Um, so this kit comes with a whole bunch of tags, 21 tags with different tabs. It comes with four dies to cut, to give you all of those different edges. Look at that fun stuff. And then it comes with the rings, two sets of three rings to create your tag journals. So you can have as many layers as you want, play around with it. We've got uh, this journal set on for 25% off right now. You can grab it in the sale category up on the website and have fun with it. Let us know what you think. Okay. Now, where are we at? We want to I want to show you another way to adhere our rice paper. So we're going to move into the craft along card for this session, uh, for the session three. So make sure if you bought the uh, virtual open house kit that you've got all of the pieces for session three. And we will begin to put this together. So we're going to grab our rice paper. And I'm going to find my mouse somewhere on my desk. There we go. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces prepped here. If you missed it, you can find all of these instructions in our prep video and the full card making instructions for this card on our website, not to worry. Okay, so we've got our card base, some bits and pieces here, and we're going to build a rice paper background. So I'm gonna do the same technique. I'm going to grab my water brush or you can cut it out as well, um, but we're going to trim our rice paper to about the size of our card. So five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's super easy to just trace whatever size you want because this is going to fill our full background. So I'm just taking my water brush and tracing around to get that size. I don't have to be too exact because we're going to trim it up afterwards. And that's what I love about rice papers. If you're looking for something to get you out of your comfort zone, it's a really great way um, because you just get to play with it. Nothing has to be too exact. You're, you can't make a mistake with rice paper. It's just fun. So we've watered it down. We're just tearing it out of our sheet. I love the Art by Marlene rice papers. Now this one's a little bit different, you know, than our kind of the sheets where you can take different elements from. And of course you can take the background of that as well. Uh, but this is a full sheet of kind of background that you can use as a full background, like we are going to here, but you could also have just like little bits and pieces across the side of something. You can apply it however you want. So for our card, we're taking 
This is the sheet of card that we've trimmed to five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're going to just apply a little bit of, I'm gonna use my glossy glue seal and glaze, but again, you can use a little bit of watered down glue. You can use your textured effects. You can do anything, Mod Podge, whatever you've got. And we're just gonna apply a light coat of that to tack down our base. And that on that card, the sheet, not the card base, just the sheet. And we're just going to apply our rice paper over top. Love it. Now, instead of applying, um, instead of applying another coat of our sealer or our glue or whatever, what we're gonna do is we will, first of all, grab a washable craft mat before we get in too deep here. <laughs> Hopefully you guys already have yours out if you're crafting along, but I don't wanna get my workspace all messy. Okay. And then instead of our sealer, we're going to use a little bit of our metallic gilding polish. So you really can use anything to seal it in. So because we've already put down that base coat of our uh, glossy glue sealing glaze, we know it's gonna be held in place. We know we're safe with that. And we're just gonna blend in by adding on our metallic gilding polish. This is the bright sunshine metallic gilding polish from the virtual open house kit, but you can use whatever you've got on hand to try this technique out and just blend it in and create your own background. So I'm kind of just starting a little heavier with the metallic gilding polish on the outside and getting lighter as I move into the center, just to add some interest to our background and really make it nice and bright and sunshiny. Just applying kind of circular motions and bringing it into the center. So we can go as thick as we want or as thin. You can see on the sample card, we've really covered it up quite well. You can't really see many uh, dots through, but oh my goodness, guys, the texture on this is just so interesting. And because it's a textured rice paper, the metallic gilding polish just picks up and glints because there's so much variation in the background, so much texture. So we'll add a little bit more on. If you're crafting along at home, do what feels right to you. Take it as far as you want to take it. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside to dry and then we'll come back and trim it up to fit onto our card. Now, while our rice paper technique is drying, why don't we work on creating this really fun rainbow? So I'm gonna grab just a piece of white cardstock. If you have your kit, um, your virtual, open house kit, you can grab some white cardstock from there. Uh, it is our Ecstasy Crafts, Crafts Premium White Cardstock, which I also saw on the sale category too, guys. So we really, tons of savings come in your way. It's the uh, paper that I use every day when I'm crafting, every day. So I'm just cleaning up my workspace a little bit and grabbing a fresh sheet or a half sheet, whatever. We're just making a little rainbow on it. So don't stress if you don't have a full sheet of our paper. And I'm going to grab a little paintbrush. I'm using a paint palette, but if you don't have a paint palette, you can just mix your paints on the side of your craft mat, no big deal. So what we're going to do is use the mixed media items from our virtual open house kit, mix them together to create all of the colors of the rainbow. So we're taking our neon pink, our shocking pink neon polish. We're taking our bright sunshine gilding polish and we are taking our teal marine pixie sparkle. And what I'm going to do is 
just grab a little bit of each of these colors. So we want our neon polish in there for our plain pink. We don't need much. But then we also are going to mix our pink polish with some blue pixie powder to create our purple. And we're also going to mix some pink polish with our yellow metallic gilding polish to create some orange. So I've got three pieces there. Now let's go in with a little bit of our pixie powder. And we will add a little pixie powder to our pink neon polish in one of the containers or you know in one of the dabs and with a little bit of water we'll mix it up and create a really fun purple now make sure you're adding enough water to really mix it you, you've got to break up that neon polish and mix it in with your pixie sparkles to get that really, really pretty purple. And do whatever shade you want. This is your rainbow. Okay. Now we're just going to start out and make the first swipe in an arch of our rainbow. Again, this is just for fun, guys. I know sometimes people get nervous freehanding stuff, but it just takes one swipe to make the arch of our rainbow. So this is our top layer. Make sure it's big enough for you to fit all your other colors in there. And there you have it. There's the first arch. <laughs> of our rainbow. Okay. You can do these colors in any order that you want. But next up, I'm going to go green. I think I have the colors of my rainbow all mixed up and backwards. <laughs> but we're going to take our metallic gilding polish, get a little scoop. We'll add some of that to our pink neon polish to make our orange in a minute. We will also need some plain yellow and we'll take some to mix with our blue pixie sparkle to make our green. So we've added it to three. So now I'm gonna go green next. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my pixie sparkles to my yellow metallic gilding polish. And mix that up with a little bit of water, adding as much water as you need. And look at that bright green, how fun. So when you, if you have these Cosmic Shimmer products in your craft stash, keep in mind, you, you have a rainbow of colors. This is all from three primary colors. Well, we're saying the pink is like the red here in our mixing pots, but we can make every color of the rainbow with three totally different products, all water-based or you know powder. So then we mix the water in. So that helps when we're mixing, but have fun. Don't be afraid to mix different things together, experiment and try it out. So here we're going in with our green stripe. Lots of fun. There we go. Okay. I'm going to rinse my brush. What color do we want next? Let's go with our straight pink. So into my uh, neon polish, I'm just adding a little bit of water to get a nice consistency to paint on with my brush. 
the, the way that the polishes come uh, are a little thicker in their little polish pots because they're meant to be applied with the built-in polish brush to work that way. But just by adding a little bit of water because all of these products are water-based, we can stretch them and use them in a bunch of different ways. So we'll swipe on our pink. There we go. Now we're going to take our pink and yellow pot, mix that together to create a lovely orange. Add in water as we need it. Ooh, look at that orange, pretty. Swipe that on, just in an arch. We don't have to be too worried about it. It's just a fun rainbow. There we go. Let's go rinse our brush. Add a little yellow, a little water to our yellow gilding polish, a bright sunshine gilding polish. Little yellow stripe. There we go. And then last but not least, we'll just put a little puff of our Pixie Sparkles into our container, add a touch of water and swipe some of that on there. There we go. Perfect <laughs> little rainbow. Oh, I got a chunk of my gilding polish on there. Get that in there. There we go. Now we'll let that dry. While we have a little bit of our pixie powder here, a nice light blue, let's just swipe some on and we will use it to cut out our cloud dies. Just swipe that on. You can use a thicker brush if you've got it or use it, whatever, whatever's going. We don't need a ton. Just a nice light cloud blue there. If you want, you can do a poof of your pixie powder. Spritz it to get that speckled look. How fun is that? Okay, there we go. We'll set that aside to dry and we will move on to uh, trimming up our rice paper. That guy should be dry by now. Don't forget to uh, give your Little applicator brushes, if you use them at all, give them a rinse with some water so that they don't dry up and get all crusty on you. And you can keep your little paint palette here because of the water-based product. If you wanna save your little rainbow of colors, um, you can just leave it and add water and mix it back up when you're ready to use it again if it dries out. So let's take our rice paper and we wanna trim this guy up. Two, four inches by five and a quarter inches. So I'm going to trim about an eighth of an inch off of either side so that we get a nice clean edge. If you like that ruffled edge, by all means, leave it on there. Um, but I'm going to trim mine off just to give it a nice clean look. Just an eighth of an inch off of each side. So that we end up with a rice paper card that is four inches by five and a quarter inches to add on to our card base. So there we go. Got that trimmed up. How cute is that? Now we can add that onto our card base with, um, I always tend to go for my double-sided tape. Uh, you can use glue. We've just got this cool tape dispenser, the Helmar tape dispenser, which I'm finding myself using all of the time now. It just throws your 
tape on there. Oh, our paper is cut to four inches by five and a quarter inches. So we've just trimmed an eighth of an inch off of each side of that little card. If you had followed the uh, prep instructions from that size. So we're tossing that onto our card base. Here we go with a little white border, frames it up really nicely. Now, while our rainbow is still drying, why don't we add a little sentiment to our card? We're going to grab one of the rub-on transfer, rub-on transfer sentiments from the Art by Marlene rub-on transfer set. We're gonna have a session all about rub-on transfers. Um, we have so many different ones. So I'm not gonna go too in depth with it right now, but why don't we, from the back sheet of this set, we've got prove yourself to yourself, not others, which I thought is just so lovely to put with a little rainbow. So I'm just gonna trim that out of that sheet. You don't have to do anything crazy, just roughly with a pair of scissors. This is going onto our little sentiment page, our little sentiment card. So you peel off that clear layer and your little rub on transfer should stick to that. Line it up and just give it a rub. You can use a scoring tool, um, the back of a pen, something to just rub that on there. And your letters should be sticking to your card. So you can gently peel it up, see if it's going properly. If not, if you're missing pieces, just go back, rub some more. Kind of like a temporary tattoo. <laughs> there we go. Clean onto our sheet. Tons of fun. Now I will put some tape or glue, whatever's going on the back of our sentiment. Mount it on a little piece of black cardstock. Again, guys. All of this, these materials were prepped in our prep session. So if you need, uh, we have written instructions for that. You can find the full card making instructions from start to finish up on our website. Not to worry. Now, let's say, oh yes. Okay, so we wanna die cut some clouds using the Nelly scene dies. We want to die cut. I cut a large cloud and a medium cloud out for this card. So that's what we'll do from that little blue pixie powder that we spread. We're going to run this through the die cutting machine and uh, come back with two little clouds. And Let's not forget, we have the biggest sale of all time going on on our website right now for our Go Power and Emboss machine. If you guys need an electric machine, you want to upgrade your machine, it is the absolute best. It runs our die cuts through automatically. You hit one button, it adjusts the tension. There's no fiddling around with different plates and you come out with lovely little die cuts every time. So now that we've cut these out, I'm going to take, I just have a fine line pen and you don't have to do this, but I think it really makes them pop and gives it kind of like a hand sketched look. Just a black permanent pen. And I'm just gonna go around and just draw a little black outline 
about an eighth of an inch away from the outside of my clouds. Now I do love to do, here you can see what I'm doing. It just gives a hand sketched fun look. I do always toss in a little loop-de-loop -loop every so often so that I, I feel like it gives more of the look of like, you know, I'm going for a hand-drawn look. I'm not trying to look like I'm drawing perfect black lines each time because I know I'm not going to achieve that. If you can do that, oh my goodness, by all means, but I am no artist. So <laughs> I feel like the loop-de-loops help a little bit. Just have fun with it. There we go. Outline our medium cloud. A little loop-de-loop -loop here and there. There you've got it. Okay. Now, hopefully our rainbows dry by now. We are going to just cut it out by hand, just around the edges. around that arch as best you can. Perfect. Now to really bring it to life again, I'm going to use that black pen and just draw a black line on the outside edge of each of my colored stripes. It doesn't have to be right on the edge. And we're going to add some little scribbles and dots to really give it that hand drawn look. So the mistakes are meant to be there. The wobbly lines, that's the look we're going for. It makes it really cute and whimsical. So I'm starting out drawn lines around each, uh, each color in that arch. You can see it's coming along and it really helps them to each individually pop. Keep going around each band of color. There we go. Now that we have that, we'll kind of get the placement, the idea of the placement on our card. The cloud should cover the one end, clean it up a bit and our sentiment should cover the other. Here we go. So we can add little scribbles here and there just outside of what's going to be covered. Just to add some look if you want, do it if you want, do what feels good to you do the look that you're going for, but to get that little whimsical look, I've just added squiggles here and there for a little hand-drawn effect. Now we can add a little bit of shading off of the ends. We wanna make sure we come up far enough from uh, where our sentiment will be covering. Just add some scribbles. It's going to stick just up past our sentiment and up from our cloud. It doesn't have to be anything too tidy. We're just 
going for that hand-drawn look. Okay, now let's pop our rainbow on with some tape. You can use your foam pads from your virtual open house kit if you wanted. We've got all kinds of foam pads and strips and all kinds of goodies up on the website. If you're running low. I'm just gonna attach our rainbow. I'll move in the center. Then with our foam pads, wherever I've tossed them, wherever they are. Got them. Oh. <laughs> I had Anita in the producer's booth handing me pads too. Between the two of us, we were going to find them. You know how it is when you're crafting. Okay, so we're going to add some pads to our sentiments and then we'll add them to our clouds as well. Beautiful. Just add some dimension and make some pop. There we go. Get our sentiment on there. Our cloud on. Now, there we go. <laughs> and then I like to stick my second one just wherever, add a little bit more interest. And each time you do it, it's going to look a little different different shapes, different feel. You could do different color schemes for anything. So tons of fun. If you guys want to try out some of the other rice paper techniques that we played with uh, in this session, don't forget, we've got tons of rice papers up on the, um, the page for uh, the virtual open house and you can find the sale there. I'm just gonna grab my mouse somewhere. <laughs> um, somewhere on my desk, wherever you are. Oh my goodness. There we go. Thanks so much for joining us for session three. We Before we take off, uh, we still have our $25 gift card draw to do for those of you watching live and registered on our Eventbrite. We have a drum roll, please. Susan Lowe. Susan Lowe, you or Lau, Lowe, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Susan, shoot us a message on Facebook so we can get your info and send you that $25 gift card. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget, you can check out all the sale items. You've got that special coupon uh, for 10% off. For everyone watching live, get that coupon for 10% off all regular price items. So things like the textured effects paste would be 10% off. Things like the new Helmar little tape gun, 10% off if you use that coupon code. Um, in addition to our awesome, awesome 25 percent off of the rice papers and all of the other sales that we've already mentioned. We've got uh, those special little bundles from Rosemarie, which was so awesome with those stamps. What was our first session? I've already blanked out. We've been through so much. <laughs> uh, so tons of sales. You can find them all under the virtual open house sale category up on xccrafts.com. Thanks so much for joining us for session number three. Stay tuned. We're going to take a quick coffee break, you know, run, go to the bathroom, clean up your station and get ready for session four. We have Emily coming live uh, to teach us how to build a step card and really step up your card making game from scratch. So we will see you at two o'clock.